Hi everybody, this is Angel Arts and welcome back to another session, session number 17 of Dragon Age Resurgence. And um, this might be a more slightly normal campaign or session compared to the one we just <laughs> had last time. Um, if you're just <laughs> joining us, if you decided to skip out on the crossover session, that's perfectly fine. I don't think you missed an incredible amount. Um, we're just going to continue on. Just know that they were they went off and disappeared somewhere for a day or two and then came back. But before that, let's, uh, let's have our warm-up question. So um, I want to know if you hypothetically never got pulled into this adventure in the first place. If you never got your bracer, if your mark never started acting up, you never met each other. And... Uh, where do you see your character right now doing at this point? Uh, keep in mind that I would like to say in-game it's probably been two to three months. Two to three months, I think, has passed since you guys met, I think, roughly. So uh, what do you think you guys would be doing right now? What would you guys think you'd be up to? Weren't off saving the world or or messing it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think Andrea would be doing her mission. So she'd either get herself killed doing her mission or she would be succeeding, but that's what she would be doing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. man. Who do you think... Yeah. <laughs> which one do you think you would have tried to pursue first? Which of the four? Um... Gwyneal, because uh, I knew exactly where he was, and I knew who who he was, and I knew that he knew he had access to the others. So if I could, yeah. you know, talk to him, I could worm my way into the rest of the group. Which is why I, I pushed to go to the White Spire first, because I wanted to go talk ah. to Gwyneal. So strategic, <laughs> yes, very cool. Yeah, um, I think Halliser would be dead. And I think that Mafarath would be destroying the world. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that would be terrifying. <laughs> yeah. You don't think that uh, Halaser would have been able to find the Eye of Andraste on her own or maybe with some other help, oh, some other people's help? I am absolutely sure she would have, but would her other allies have been able to help pull her out of her, her most recent uh, mm. issue? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, just out of curiosity, um, I don't think there's going to be a wrong answer to this. If you were trying to recruit your own personal party of people to help you, does anyone <sighs> come into mind that you might have recruited in your own Halisair offshoot adventure if this, if this campaign never started? <laughs> Halisair spinoff, let's go. Um <laughs> Because she would not have known that her sister was alive. She would not and have she known. wouldn't have, well, I mean, she wouldn't have uh, really known much about Thea. She wouldn't have known about any of our PCs. Okay. Um, she has Chantry Chai's. So I have a feeling she probably, if she could not. Oh, no. You know what? She is a Chantry sister. She would have probably f tried to find a way okay. towards the Divine and mm -hmm. towards Mildin. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah. that was definitely an option at the beginning of the campaign. That was yeah, totally. That definitely an option at the beginning of the campaign. So <laughs> I would have been curious to see how that would have played out if that happened near the yeah. beginning. But, you know. That's okay. <laughs> I love what ifs. <laughs> Kenna or Theobin? Um... For Kenna, I think she just met Razakiel. And yeah, she did meet Razakiel. Mm -hmm. She was very curious about her, and I'm wondering, I think she would have gone with Razakiel eventually, and I think she would have a whole thing going on. Um, I think she maybe would have joined the Grey Wardens there. Ooh. And oh, nice. That would have been cool. Done everything she could to stop future blights from happening. And so she would have joined the Grey Wardens. That would be really cool. And helped 
what was going on there. Huh. Are you saying, nice. Are you saying that she would have aided the dark spawn, like um, you know, in trying to get their area and against being hunted by Kalsharok, etc. Um, probably, or just been with the other wardens that were there. Yeah, I, I, kinda, I think so. Yeah, I'd like to believe that even if Kenna didn't meet the rest of the group, she and Razakale would have had an understanding. They probably would have still, yeah. you know, had the same understanding with each other as they do now. Is as what I'm predicting. So, how about the omen? <laughs> Well, that was the reason I asked, because um, so if Theoban had never gone into the Alivian and met the group, the Theoban was planning to attempt to join the Dwarven army. Um, he was starting to become disillusioned with his job and had um, a sort of subconscious fear that at some point it was going to come back to bite him and he was going to end up poisoned himself. Um, and he was saving up money to bribe one of the Dwarven nobles to accept him as a warrior on their behalf. Mm. And so he'd have been fighting Darkspawn, which is why I asked Sam that question, because then in that universe, if Kenna had been sending them, Theoban may have been at odds, which is amusing. And then when um, when uh, Mr. Sevian Hannock comes in, with the uh, with the anvil of the void, you would have been one of the dwarves who would be like, "He's our hero." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to, yeah, but I mean that um, for me was one of the reasons that he took Kane's offer in the first place, all mm. the way back in session one, because mm -hmm. when he was already stopped piling money to try to bribe one of the nobles, yeah. when somebody comes in and offers you gold, yeah, it was uh, it, it was a opportunity for him. But that, that would have been his plan, so. Uh, let me ask a follow-up question to all of you. Do you think that in, do you think that uh, with what you just described, I think it might be a little bit easier for Halaser to answer this question, but um, do you think your character would have been happier or at least, at least blissfully naive? <laughs> blissfully naive, <laughs> well, I mean, if she died, <laughs> but yeah. uh, if she lived, no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, you you think that you were happier having this supposed burden that you didn't ask for handed to you? Yeah, it's weird <laughs> and it's awful. But if that means that she gets to save the world, then. Fine. That's uh, another weapon in her arsenal. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, I think for Andrea, it it's an easy yes. She's happier with the group. Um, okay. Because with the group for the first time, she has purpose and family, and uh, she didn't have that before. So, um, but she, if she was in the other world, she would probably still be having fun and enjoying herself. It just would be purposeless fun. So. Uh, this this she feels more fulfilled than she would there. Do you think that she would have ever found out about Trina? Because I don't think Trina would have done what she did if she didn't see Mr. Templar appear in front of her, which is the same Templar that was trying to come after her before. I think she would have kept her guys. Probably not, Ben. Probably, uh, not. <laughs> probably yeah. not. I mean, she's not a very like she she's not a very trusting person. But mm -hmm. at the same time, she's like whatever few friends she has. Trina. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she was really good at faking. She was being... really good. <laughs> so... <laughs> Eventually, so. she makes a mistake. So yeah. But if a Templar named Cedric Ashwood showed up and he was trying to hunt down my friend, I might have kicked his butt. <laughs> so. oh, <wow. laughs> Again. Again. Stay, stay away Again. from Trina, Again. or I'll have to kill you a second time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Theobin or Kenna? Hmm. I don't know if she would have been happy. Okay. Felt that there had been more more purpose than wandering trying to find her people she felt like she's more involved with a bigger picture and something bigger than herself 
but I don't know if she would have been happier. Kenna seems to be the one that was the most willing to embrace the Pentaviv Guardian Kool Aid. So. <laughs> That's sure, so true. I'll drink this. <laughs> yeah. For sure. You all look trustworthy. How about the Oven? Would the Oven been happier or blissfully naive or no? I'm I'm not sure. Um I mean he would definitely have been blissfully naive in the sense of he wouldn't have found out if he has a daughter. Um uh, happier Maybe not, because I think the reasoning for him wanting to would have been to give his life purpose, and he does. So I suppose, I mean, it, what they're doing now, I think if he were to look at the two worlds, he would say he's happier, but I, I don't think he would have been unhappy in the other world either. I think he would have seen it as doing his dwarven duty. Yeah, I don't think he would have had the purpose of being a dwarven ambassador to Darkspawn. <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's something that well, I don't think yeah. you would see coming. ambassador to Darkspawn, but then killing them. <laughs> as, lo you can't, as long as you're better than Udina. <laughs> <laughs> that's yes. true. Um, I, guess, I guess you could hang up on the dwarven council. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, you probably do that. I I I can definitely say that he'd still pursue a job within the Templar Order. Um, I feel like he wouldn't be traveling around as much. He might be stationed somewhere else. Um, but yeah, I I definitely can't see him never being a Templar because that's just who he is, I guess, through his soul and body. Um, it's something that you can't escape. Um, I do think he would at least try to remain with you. Um, and he would probably learn about Hugh's condition. Uh, and I can definitely see him trying to help you or fix you as much as possible at least because um, that's just who he is for the second question our second part uh would he have been uh happier if he never got involved with uh the guardians um that's that's a bit harder well, that, that question's a bit harder to explain. Um, yes and no. Uh, the the people who he's met has definitely influenced the person who he is today. Um, for good or for worse, whatever people want to take it as, I take it. I take it for better. Um, He's constantly growing through his interactions. I think he's happy where he is. Though though he's going through a lot of stuff, I think he's happy with the people that he's got at his back. Um, even though we have our little fights and quarrels, I, I think he's good. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and continue. So, uh, you guys had a nice... Diversion, a nice distraction for uh, not quite a day, not quite a day. I, I think that uh, they were able to send you back the next morning, roughly. So it's probably just about lunchtime uh, by the time you return. And um, you guys are back in the chamber where you found yourselves. Uh, Violetta is currently not there. Um, your brother is current, current Kenna, your brother, uh, is currently not there. Eric, um, that probably makes a lot of sense because a lot of time has passed by. Mm -hmm. Uh, you do, however, see some, uh, markings, uh, along the wall 
surrounding you, like sigil markings around the wall. Violet sigils around the wall. Oh. Can I read them? Uh, you can roll a magic to try to figure out what oh, they might mean. They're, they're magic. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody know what these are? It's okay, I'm a wizard. How about the magical oh, yeah. knowing dwarf? <laughs> our, our, yeah, magic dwarf yeah. our dwarf magic expert here. Um, he got better than me. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Uh, not he, is, he is a wizard, so. Uh... <laughs> uh, it's in his DNA. Uh, I would say that with that I... role, Theoben, you're... you're not sure what the purpose of the sigils are. You don't think it's anything dangerous. But you think it is something that is informative. These sigils are informing someone of something. Um, could I? I'm feeling informing from you. Could, I don't know what it's. Called. It's not dangerous. Okay. Um. Could I take a look? Yes. See what they're informing us of. Yes. Roll a magic roll. You can add two because Theobin kind of gave you a little bit of a hint. So feel free to add two to this. Okay, so this is, nope. a, this is a spell um, that allows someone to... Are you familiar with the alarm spell? In, yeah, I had a um, feeling. Okay, so it's, it's something similar to that where if, uh, if you end up within that circle, basically, where the sigils are on the wall, if you end up there, it'll inform the person that somebody triggered the, not a trap, but somebody triggered something, and then how many people, the number of people that were within the area. Oh, yeah. Rosie! Oh. We're back, she says as she looks around curiously. She's been kind of quiet this whole time. That felt weird. <laughs> it feel weird, didn't it? Yeah, it almost okay? made me want to throw up a little bit. Let's not Dude. do that again, please. <laughs> uh, I want to be a lot before I left. Don't worry about it. Hmm. Well, do you think they're down with the other dwarves? The people. Mr. Linda might be wondering where I where I am. I think okay, I'm late for class. It's fine. I'll, I'll write you a note. She uh, smiles a little bit, but the fa look on her face is like, I don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I think I'm still going to be in trouble. <laughs> is what it looks like on her face. <laughs> Are there any tracks in the dirt that are from Violetta and my brother that lead down to the dwarves or they leave out of the cave? Use a perception. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, can I use tracking or searching for focus? Yeah, you can, absolutely. 16. Yes, so there are tracks Very all nice. around this area as if maybe they were circling around, pacing around, maybe they were looking for something. In this, this, yeah. in this general area, um, you don't see tracks going out from where you came from, but you do see some tracks going deeper towards where the dwarven school is. Yes. Well, that confirms it. They went down. All right. Um, I think Should Rosie go. would like to go back to Belinda. Is there anything else we need to do? There? Of our friends who are down there. Exactly. If this is what you say it is, I, I would want to wait for them to come up. But if, if we need to bring her down, let's bring her down. Onwards. You guys make your way to uh, <laughs> the. The Dwarven uh, school again. Those traps aren't still there, are they? <laughs> uh, do you want to look? Traps. <laughs> uh, that might be a good idea. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't want Kennedy pulling them again. <laughs> well, I don't want Rosie oh. to get cut in half. <laughs> Those dying. Um, where's traps? Traps, 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 traps. Oh, here it is. Um, so are you moving down the hallway to where the traps were? Is that where you're? Yeah. All right, so you're moving down. 18. You don't see the traps sprung, but you do start seeing Violetta down the hallway with <gasps> Eric right behind her. Oh. And she Hi guys. she yells out, "There you are. I knew um that you would eventually pop back in, at least hopefully." Hmm. Eric is, is right. <laughs> next, is right next to her as well. You're, you're back, Kenna. He says. I'm back. I give him a hug. He's not uh, gonna believe go where we were. You go up to him and you give were. him a hug, and he gives you a hug back. We were worried. Uh, Eric says you, you were there, and then there was this big flash of light, and then you were gone. I was in the sky. <laughs> a little bit of a weird story. You were in the sky. <laughs> Yeah. You might have to. Violetta looks at you very uh, curiously. Says you might have to um, elaborate on that, dear. Well, uh, it's a lot of complicated words. Uh, something about like jumping and fields and uh, uh, like. Mass effects and and, and and stuff and force fields. Lot of shiny stuff. Look what I got. Check out this pillow. Very soft. <laughs> <laughs> she says, My dear, this is very fine silks. She says. I know. I've never seen anything quite <laughs> like this. What material is this? Some I don't know. It's very nice. I've got tons of stuff. I kind of stole it from the people. So, how and why? She asks. Uh, kind of looks at the group like, how do we explain this? <laughs> I don't think there's any way we can. Where it we seem to be at the center of a lot of inexplicable things. Worst luck ever, really. Rosie, a woman's voice calls out, and uh, you see Zerlinda rushing past um, past uh, Kenna and company as she rushes over to the little girl, and she, uh, you know, kneels in front of her, and she said, "You had a worried sick, dear. Why on earth did you wander off like that in the first place?" And and Rosie kind of you know looks very guilt ridden and she says, "I'm sorry, Mr. Linda. I'm sorry. I just," she says, I, "there were people and and they were doing something." She's fine. She was with me the whole time. <sighs> she she looks up and says, "Fiobin, can you I'm explain sorry. what happened?" We've been searching all over the grounds for her, and the only thing that 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 uh, they were able to tell us is that they were doing some sort of exorcism on someone, and then there was this demon. And look, Rosie had no part in that. She saw no exorcism, no demons. She was with me the whole time. I made sure she was completely safe. Come, she says, and she she takes a hold of uh, she takes a hold of um, Rosie's Rosie's hand. It says, "Let's get you something to eat. You must be starving." And she'll start pulling Rosie away, and Rosie's gonna follow her. Leo will let go of her hand and let her go. Yes. Linda. Cinematically, it's one of those you know slow motion. Like, <laughs> and then she like looks back towards you, you know, and then she looks back towards Zerlinda, and then they walk down the hallway towards the eating area, I guess. Theo? What? Are you going to tell her? At some point? 
maybe. Oh, good. Jeez, by the lady. What a coward. All right. I am not a coward. Then go tell her you're her father. I don't know. If I was a coward for not talking to Trina, being afraid of a little girl, I, I don't know. You were going to bring that up. <laughs> and I don't think it's quite the same thing. It's not at all the same, but... <laughs> It's. I get your point. Well, wait, Theo. You need to do this. When you are ready, you need to do this. He well, could die. We could all die. Well, that is a great argument for telling her then. Hey, I'm your father. By the way, I might be dead tomorrow. Yes. I would have rather known if my parents were alive. I mm. And that they loved me, even if they weren't with me. You, you really think this is best? I would not know. I don't know what would be best for her heart, and I don't know what would be best for your heart. Speaking as someone who's lost a parent, to have one again, there would be no greater joy. <sighs> He's gonna just walk back to the group and say, uh, are you all staying here? Good luck, Papa Bear. <laughs> Do you want company? No, I think I need to do this. Yeah, but thank you. Also. We're here when you're ready. So you will slowly make your way to the dining area. Um, you don't see Zerlinda. However, you do see uh, the kids having lunch. Um, Rosie is sitting uh, at the table with Zachariah. And um, she seems to be telling the people at the table some fantastical stories about these weird looking blue creatures and all this good stuff. And of course, the rest of the table don't believe, believe her. Um, Zachariah doesn't seem to be saying anything. He seems to be sort of enamored by this story. And uh, what, does, what does Theoban do? The, the entire walk there, he's going to be holding his breath, letting it go, holding his breath, letting it go. He's gonna... He's gonna feel very exposed. And for a moment when he sees Rosie, he's gonna take in the scene, he's gonna take in her features, he's gonna try to imagine what her face is going to be like, tell her. And he's going to put his hand in his pocket and he's going to pull something out with the appearance of a small gravestone. He's going to look at that several moments and put it again. Close his eyes. <laughs> Do this. Rosie! <clears throat> his voice is going to go really high. Rosie, uh... <laughs> Rosie uh, is in the middle of, is in mid-shoe when you say her name, and um, she uh, uh, turns around and she looks towards you. Hmm? She says, still in mid-shoe. Would, would you mind talking with me for a moment? Uh, she swallows uh, this, the uh, item that she was eating, and she says, Okay, but I, I can't go too far. Miss Miss Zerlinda might get mad again. Okay, hey, we'll we'll stay near the area. Um. And uh, Zachariah like looks towards the open and says, "It's you again." It, it's me again. Yeah. And it, not, how have you been? He's he says he says, "Okay." Um, 
We were wondering where where Rosie's been. She says something about blue people. Uh, yes, we've had quite the adventure. Uh, you've been taking care of your mom. Uh, he says, uh-huh. She's good. She's just really angry when we couldn't find Rosie. Yes. Yeah, I don't envy you that. She has quite the temper. Uh, well, we're not going to be far, but I'm just going to take Rosie, have a bit of a talk with her in private, if that's all right with you. Uh, the other dwarves uh, look towards you and they nod. Okay. I think she has See, like a piece of fruit. has less anxiety than I do. Yes. She probably has like a piece of fruit in her other hand or something. Maybe there's like a little stain, like a fruit stain <laughs> on the side of her cheek. You, 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 got, you know what? It doesn't matter. Uh, hey. Hello. Thank you again for coming to rescue me. Oh, no problem. No problem. But, um, look, it seems like it didn't seem like you were in any danger. It seems like nice people. Right? It's yes. Like they were all very nice. Although... I, she says, I wish I could have given something to Lucas and Talia. Well, yeah, that, that would have been nice, but I, I gave something to Sepia before we left. Oh, Talia's Maybe mommy. She'll, yes, that's right. So um, she'll have something to remember us by. Can we go back to visit them sometime? Uh, well, I, I asked, but it sounded like maybe they, they, they travel through, through words, maybe someday but to travel through galaxies or so I think if they can see you again, I'm sure they will. Okay. You let me know when you go back, okay? Um, maybe uh, maybe we can bring Zachariah this um, time. I think he'll like Miss Faith. Really? I don't know that much about Zachariah. What's he like? He's very nice. He's the oldest one though, so he's really he's really uh smart too. You know, I remember when uh I was pregnant with him, and, uh, you know, I'd never seen her happier. You knew Mr. Linda when, before Zachariah was born? Yeah. I did. I could tell straight away that she was meant to be a mother. Uh, she just kind of nods, and she takes another he bite from her piece of fruit. Um, Rosie, do you uh, remember when we first talked and uh, you told me your parents' name? Uh-huh. Remember that? Uh-huh. What was your father's name? My daddy's name was, was Theobin. Theobin Sol Solni? My name. You have the same name as my daddy. Did you ever meet my daddy? Yeah. Yeah. Were you eccentric guy has his issues. Were you friends? I am <laughs> your daddy. You are. Uh, she she sort of like pauses a little bit as he as she starts to, but but my daddy's dead. But you you have to, uh <laughs> no, he's he's not. He's standing right in front of you. So you're so you're not dead. I I do have a daddy. 
she says really excitedly. Yeah. Yeah. You have a you have a daddy. Oh she she gets she starts gets really excited. This this changes everything, she says. We can go we can go playing. You can help me teach me how to use my use my magic. You can help Mr. Linda teach the class maybe. Maybe. This is going to be the she I, says, I, this is going to be the best thing ever, she says as she goes <laughs> up to you and then she wraps her arms around you. <laughs> He had kind of he, his shoulders have been very tense. His body language has been very tense. She reaches in for a hug. He's gonna kind of melt into it. Daddy, Best. how about how about if you're not dead? Does that mean that mommy's with you too? Is mommy not dead? No, it it doesn't. Are you sure? I'm sorry. She says, looking a little slightly hurt by that. You were raised by your grandparents, right? Uh huh. And they said that, that, that mommy and fun. daddy died. But if you're alive, maybe, maybe, maybe mommy's alive somewhere too. Maybe we just don't know. We can go look for her. He's not... And I know that's hard for you to understand. I, You were told that I was dead because... I would have been a good daddy. The, the person that I was when you were little. And what do you... What do you mean? I loved your mother very, very much. I didn't know how to look after myself when she was gone. And that meant I couldn't look after you. I'm sorry. Oh. So... So you... you left? Why did you... Uh, no, I... I didn't, I didn't know I had you for a long time. I didn't realize I had a daughter, even, even though I really, really wanted one. And surprised to hear from Miss Linda that I had one when I saw you last time I was here. So, so, now that you're here, why do you look so sad? Am I... Am I... Not good enough? No, no. Rosie, when... The last time I was here, when I saw you... With your friends and your teacher and... You looked so happy. I didn't think you needed me. You have the family, and you didn't take that for granted. Yes. You are everything to me. But I always wanted to have a daddy. Zachariah has a daddy, yeah. and a mommy, and I didn't have any. You have one. I will live every day trying to be a good daddy to you. So does that mean you'll stay? I don't know if that's possible, but trust me, I want to. Why not? Because if I don't go, then a lot of people might be in trouble. Can I come? Can I come with you? You really think that 
I wouldn't want you to, Lucy, but I, I, safety. I can help. Miss, Mr. Linda says I'm one of the strongest people in the class. I, I can, I can help. Zachariah, maybe you know Zachariah what? can come too. Ooh, the whole class. It could be a field trip. We could all go. And he will take hands. You have me as your father, whether I'm here or not. You don't have to be with me all the time when it's dangerous, when you could get hurt for me to be your father. But I want you to be here. You and me. We won't, when this is all over, you and me won't leave each other's place. Okay. I'll, I'll raise you and I'll see what a beautiful woman you turn out to be. You promise? But Daddy has things he has to to do to make sure that that future happens to me. How long will you be gone? <laughs> I don't know. But I will come back. You promise? I promise. She uh, moves closer towards you and she gives you another big hug. Um, and you can feel her shaking a little bit? As she starts to lightly weep a little bit. I um, took the, the back of her head and stroked her hair. Again, uh, still feel the run down his cheek. When you uh, when you are finishing up your embrace, you look up and you see that Zerlinda is actually down the hall, and she catches a sight of the two of you, and then she. You know, quickly like ducks her head back and walks back towards her direction of her um, office. Uh, Theo will attempt to make eye contact with her when he when he sees her. Sure, he can. Instantly, uh, his eyes will maneuver towards her office, like he needs to speak with her. Okay, and with that, she will nod slowly, without giving any any particular expression on her face and she will move. She will, like I said, walk towards her office. Uh, Theo will find the hug for as long as Rosie is comfortable and he will plant a kiss on her forehead. Thank you, Daddy. I have to speak with Miss Cylinder. So, why don't you go back to your friends, but I'll come talk to you again before I leave, okay? She like rubs her, her eye a little bit. Okay. And then she slowly makes her way back to the table. Mm -hmm. Um, he, as she was walking away, he went, hey, Rosie. She'll stop and she'll turn around. I love you. I love you too, Daddy. And then she walks back. No, he'll nod. I'm dying over here, guys. It's so cute. It's so Aww. cute. While this is happening, while Theoben is having his conversation with Rosie. Eric is actually going to approach uh, Halasair, and ah. the boy will ask, So, how are you feeling? Better. You look better. Thank you. Yes, um, things seem to have been returning to their proper places. So, this means that he's gone it means he's gone from me it... what do you mean by that 
Might might I say something, uh, Eric? Sleep. Sure, Eric. Says. I ca- I kind of trapped him in the soul stone when he was trying to escape. So he's in this. <laughs> like... Oh, out of character. Is that what we did with him at the end? Yeah. I forgot. Oh, you did. Put I, him yeah, in there. yeah. I put okay. him in a soul stone. So like. And I'm I'm keeping him because I don't know what to do with it. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, should... uh... ooh, we should probably destroy that. We don't what want him it... escaping. What will it do? Because I I don't know how it works. Um, will it destroy his soul if we destroy it, or will he go to the fade? Or well, how do these work? If you if you just throw on the ground, that's bad. He'll just escape. We can, I can, I should be able to figure out a way to destroy him permanently, but not by normal means of just smashing it on the ground. Yes, I didn't think so. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. He was an evil person, but I can't even say evil. He was a misguided person. But there is a point to consider. Yes, he what? was trying to take over your body, though. Transforming yes. you into him. Yes. If there is anyone who has any right to be furious, it is I. But my argument stays the same. It is hard enough to contemplate what happens in the beyond. Would you rather not exist at all? Not be you in any way, shape, or form? I don't think ever. anyone would want that, but some people deserve it. Do they? Yeah. <laughs> Andre is just... Where does that line get drawn, though? He has done awful things throughout history, but... The question is, is he going to continue doing awful things? If he is, I say get rid of him. If he isn't, then maybe don't. I don't know. (laughs) That is my point. We don't know. Well, it sounded he was trying to do something wicked, so... I don't think he's changed. (sighs) I don't know. The offers- There's there is a difference to me between justice and destruction. And I also really feel it necessary to say that if I am the one staying my hand, if if I and she's like staring Andre in the face, if I am the one saying this, perhaps it is worth consideration. I'll, I'll consider whatever. I just don't want him escaping and possessing anyone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the offer is there, Eric says. I can take it and do what I can to figure out a way to properly be rid of him so he doesn't hurt anybody else. I could take a look too, Violetta says, if you want me to. Eric, I was wondering if in general you could tell us how these stones work and where do you get them? Because they they seem very powerful, but I've never seen or heard of such things before. We, the Animagi, we invented them um, because we wanted a way to be able to hold the souls there so that they can be properly resurrected. We've been trying to run a few tests. That's why we had some on the vault to see if there was anything we could do to do it safely and properly. And fortunately, we've made a lot of advancements since Cedric. The people that have gone through the ritual have been able to come back with all of their memories intact. We're making some really great progress. In fact, the whole reason why we were trying to bring Cedric on that ship was because we were trying to find a way to restore his memories. But to answer your original question, basically the soul stone allows you to essentially store 
soul energy from within it and then you can either release it back if you release it normally it'll just goes back into the fade or you could use it on one of our resurrection rituals and they have the ability to come back or Yes, I know what you're thinking, he says. I know what, for just for simplicity's sake, we'll say that Cedric is probably uneased by the dwarven mages, so he's probably waiting outside. I think that I think it's right. best for Cedric to not be present here because otherwise he probably would be interjecting quite a bit. Yeah, and, probably. Uh, yeah. He says, I, "I know what you're thinking." He says, "I remember Cedric saying that we didn't give him a choice. Well, he didn't have a choice to begin with, whether he should come back or not." We're actually giving people a choice now. If they right. want to live, they can choose to continue living. If they rather be sent back to the Fade, they had the choice. That was the choice that they could make. But it, That's fine, I... but it's not a choice. It, nature doesn't allow choices when it comes to death. Everyone dies, and that is the natural thing. More than that, I, I have questions. If you say that you are able to give a soul a choice and they are able to return with their memories, mm -hmm. are they speaking about what is happening? Is that feeding you information to make better choices? Out of character, I don't think I understand what you're what Halicea is saying out of uh, character. She's just trying to wrap her mind around it because one of her her big issues aside from, you know, maintaining the world's balance yeah. uh, is, uh, you know, you're taking people who might not want to be gone from wherever it is they came from. And so basically she's kind of uh, trying to, to find out, okay, well, what's your process? This person is saying what it was and that they want to return. And basically she's just probing for more information. That is something that we are we are trying to address as well if there was a way for us once they're inside of the soul stone for us to ask them if this is something they even want they can decide then and it would save us on our resources if they don't want to be brought back they don't have to be brought back but next sorry majority of the people who we've brought back since cedric have all been grateful so I understand Cedric feeling that this is a curse and not a second chance. He's in the minority. I'm sorry. I just don't care how they feel. I, it's nature. Life is not fair. People die. That's part of the way that the world needs to be. Otherwise, others will not have a chance to live. You, if you want to tell them that, be my guest. You can no, tell... just stop doing it. It's that easy. <clears throat> stop the research. Stop bringing people back from the dead. They are dead. Let them rest. You mean well, Eric. But my sister has the right of it. And yet... <sighs> I know where you're coming from. My people were wiped out when I was just a girl. They are all gone. And there was a time I would have done the same thing. I would have fought Halicere, to save my people. With all due respect, he says, I went out of my way to help you. I cured you. I didn't have to do that. I told, I'm aware. I told Kenna that I didn't have to do that. And I asked her, if I do this in return, would you just let us agree to disagree? And just let us be. That was the condition. Don't make me regret that. I was put in a very, very awkward mm. place. Because awkward position. I will never stop being grateful to you for that boy. Indeed. But this will cause huge problems. Do you have any idea what will happen if Tevinta finds out about what you are doing? Which is why we've been super secretive caught. about this. To venture yeah, the but last people we want to know with this. Super secretive doesn't matter in this world. They always find out. 
They always find out. They know when ma big magic is happening. Trellif Thompson deals with people like Kane. He he works with very big people who do very bad things. Do you really think he's not he's doing it just out of the goodness of his heart for you and your people? He's not. He's doing it for money or for power. That's how these things work. He wouldn't fund you otherwise. Hmm. Moreover, if curing me had a price on it and you didn't let me know, I feel like there should be some consideration on that. I t we are not going to agree in any way, shape, or form on this boy. I do not believe it is right. I think beyond the fact if it's right or wrong, I don't think you and Ari are considering the consequences. I'm, I've been thinking about it and I know you're coming from good intentions, but the world has a way of turning good intentions for evil purposes. I mean, let's say you go through this 100 years from now, the resurrection stones won't be a secret. They'll be public. And you know who will have access to those stones <laughs> are the people with power and money. And so the mother who dies leaving behind a family of five will never get a resurrection stone. But the tyrant who was poisoned in order to save the people will be able to come back again and again. You and Ari, these stones, every soul that will be affected by these stones will be on you. Can you bear the weight of that consequence? Do you understand what we're saying? It's not about what we want and the goals of now. You have to look to the future and the ramifications of that choice. It's, I know you want to bring our people back. And, but the point is, is can't because we have to think beyond ourselves do you understand what we're trying to see i know what you're trying to say i understand what you're trying to say all throughout history there have been advances new weapons invented new magic as weapon and yes there have been cases when those powerful objects things have been into possession of bad people to take advantage of it but there's also been very powerful people who are able to counteract against it, balance it. I'd like to still believe that overall, that good will be able to conquer whatever bad can come from this. I'd have to believe that, that this is something that will, in the long run, help more than harm. There is a balance in all things, boy. For every hero that fails, an evil rises, allowing a better hero to come in, allowing a better evil to come in. This is... It is a cycle. It is never ending, but always moving forward and always becoming more than it was. Is this something you want? Yes, this is... This is how we believe we are going to move forward and progress. This is us moving forward. No, it's moving backwards. You're, you're looking to the dead, not to the living. It is the exact opposite of moving forward. Moving is forward is putting what is in the past away and moving on to take care of. You learn from that. You learn from that killing pain. The you let it go and you move the mother. Yes. It is the exact opposite of moving forward. And you are not conquering evil, you are conquering death, and death is part of life. 
it is not evil. It is natural. It is part of the world. It is something we must all face at some point. The best of intents may yet be the worst of choices. I'm sorry. Like I said, I don't think that we're going to win, either of us are going to win this debate. Very well, but what do you, well, let's say best case scenario, things work out wonderfully. What do you think will happen? As a result of your research, I would like to know what your ideal world would look like. I guess a world where people don't have to fear the loss of loss. I guess a place where we can make sure that 